Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have an HP 214B pulse generator. Because we have a dial here, we have option one. This particular unit is coming into the lab. I was told it doesn't work and we're going to see if we can make it work. So this does 200 watt power pulses and is good for pulsing things like laser diodes, a couple of other things, um, anything that would need a power output pulse with a reasonably fast edge rise time. It's not super fast edges. We have some super fast edge equipment in the lab. I would not put this unit in that category. However, for power pulses, this will deliver some substantial power to the device under test. So we're gonna see if we can't get it up and running. So first up, let's give it an inspection. These feel extremely crusty. I'm not even sure. And the whole front panel is um, incredibly dirty. So let's get the uh, panels off and give it an inspection before we fire it up. I suspect this one's gonna need some cleaning. All right, let's see what we're working with. God, this feels awful too. Oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna need some cleaning on this one. This one's got some, some crust in it. Oh, tubes. So we actually have a piece of tube equipment. Uh, anytime you do find vacuum tubes in, in any piece of equipment, know that there could be elevated, there, well, not could be, there will be elevated voltages in that equipment, and you should always take care. We're going to have to take care of this PCB specifically because when we clean this thing, we're going to have to take care of the high-voltage power supply. So, yeah, this thing is filthy. Holy cow. Uh, let me get the bottom off of this, and we'll see how we're going to go about tackling this and cleaning this. Well, the bottom looks much better, but the top is pretty gross. So let's work on flushing that out and go from there. We're going to start with a good flush of isopropyl alcohol and um, gravity. I'm going to try to get everything to come down here. We are going to need to service all of these switches so I'm not too worried about getting them all crusty because we are going to clean them significantly here in a little bit. Go charge up the compressor and get some compressed air going. All right. Well, given that this is a power supply, pulsed power supply, but a power supply nonetheless, the specifications aren't too tight. But, well, for HP, some of them are very tight, but the front and front panel controls, there's, there's a lot of tolerance in there, given that this is a pulsed power supply. Also, the fact that it is a power supply, I can't do a full alignment on this because I am missing a couple of critical parts that I need to not blow up the equipment that I'm doing the alignment with. One of which is a 20 dB attenuator that's rated for 50 watts, which is kind of nuts. Um, those are uh, rather expensive. I've been looking to see if I can find one. So before we can do a full alignment on this thing, we'll need to get some additional CAL equipment in, into the lab. Not necessarily a problem. I'm no stranger to CAL equipment or CAL equipment pricing. Just got to uh, get it planned out in the lab budget and take care of it. However, I do want to validate the power supply in here just to make sure it's all... it's good and ready to go and that's going to be a little bit of a challenge we have a bunch of test points under here everything is measured via tp7 which is way back up under here and uh, that's the ground reference for all the power supply measurements now given some of the size of these cans as well as some of the voltages that are in, that are involved, especially with the size of this transformer. The manual has warnings about fatal voltages and all kinds of good stuff all over the place. Heed those warnings. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. I am comfortable working around high voltage. I've done it for quite some time, and I know all the safety precautions and things to take care of. Also remember, high voltage is fun. Don't get it on you. It... Uh, really can ruin your day and be immediately hazardous to life and health. So take care. 
Uh, the two main test points we're interested in is TP1, which is right here, and TP5, which is right here. So we need to balance these test points. Those are the positive and negative power supply rails, if I remember correctly. And they need to be within 22 volts of each other, plus minus 220 millivolts. So we're going to do a relative measurement against those two rails, and then we'll go from there. The second step after adjusting the power supply, if you have to adjust any of the timing, does require a full calibration and alignment on this unit. So we're going to check in the power supply. If the power supply is good, we're going to call it there. If not, I'm going to, I'm going to have to bring in the Cal equipment and do a full alignment on this unit. If I have to adjust the power supply, it's going to require a full alignment to get it back into specification. Also, if I have to do the next step, which is some of the timing and pulse width, it's going to require a full calibration and alignment of the front panel anyway. So we will be forced. But let's see how this power supply is doing. Okay, so 3 to 10. Our voltages should be approximately 155, which is a little light, but okay. This one should be 133, a little light, but okay. Not a problem there. We'll kick up to 30 to 100. And... 263 is approximately what I need. And I'm at 257. And 235, which is both okay approximately. And let's check the deltas between those two test points now. And make sure I should have in the 3 to 10 range, I should have 220 millivolts. Or 22 volts plus minus 220 millivolts, and then I should have also a 22, so I should have a 22 volt difference between those two points, regardless on which range we're at. So let's check and see how that's running. We are going to shut the power off to the device to move the probes, just so we can do this as safely as possible. We're also going to give it some time to discharge. Okay, changing out the meter probes, so we don't have to get our hands in the power supply. And we'll bump this down. That is looking very good. We'll check the higher range. That is looking very good as well. So power supply looks like it's okay. All right, the rest of the power rails we have to check are back here in this corner. There's a bunch of test points that are labeled what the voltages should be. We're going to buzz through those real quick and make sure everything looks sane. I'm going to point you guys at the DMM, and I'm going to pay attention to not get my meter probe where I don't want it to be. All right, so to probe these, we are using a very long, very insulated meter probe without too much sticking out the front end. First one up is plus five. Looks all right. Second one is 7.5. Or wait. Need a little bit more light. See what I'm doing down there. Because that's either going to be a bunk power rail or I had the wrong test point. Uh, that was the 5 volt test point. So that one was fine. Next up is plus minus 15. That's our minus 15 volt rail. That's plenty fine. Now our plus 15 volt rail. That is also fine. Okay, so the power supply in this thing looks good. No problems. So, with that being said, the next adjustment is the period adjust. And that's the one that if you adjust it, you have to redo the whole, whole piece or the whole instrument. And I don't have the 
attenuator that I need to get that done. So we are going to have to call it there. There's not much else I can do on this one at the moment. If anybody has any recommendations on a 20 dB 50 watt attenuator that's passed through, let me know because I am now in the market for one. I'd love to get this thing fully, fully lined up, but we'll have to call this one as is right now uh, just because of the equipment we have available. Let me get the covers put back on and then we will close out the video. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this HP 214B, uh, option one, I believe, if I remember correctly. This one's gonna find a home in the lab. I need to take these rack ears off for the moment. These are all getting saved because we have some future plans coming that got interrupted by some ceiling height issues. So we got some neat stuff on the way. Really excited to bring a whole bunch of different things to you guys. This one's actually all set up, ready to go, and is going to be added to the lab stock. I have several more of these units on the back shelves. If anybody needs one, let me know, and uh, we'll see what we can happen and make happen for someone. But if not, just hang around. Hit all the YouTube buttons, subscribe, like, and share it with share the video if you found this content interesting or informative. If you'd like additional content and would like to be a part of the early early release area, check out the Patreon page. Patrons are running ahead of YouTube for a little while, and their support greatly helps bring videos to the channel. So without their support, this would not be near where it is today, and I am eternally grateful for everything all the patrons have done for me. As always, I'll see everybody in the next video, and more is always on the way.